Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and this is Law and Theory. Today, we're going to take a closer look at Spartans and whether or not some of their augmentations can be passed on to their children, and what that could mean for the UNSC at large. Well, I'm not going to complain. Uh-huh. So tell me more about Rio. What else did I miss? Oh man, the place is a mess. I mean, too many Covenant Asylum Seekers. All pinned up. Yeah, DeMarco said it was crazy. Well, it could have been worse. I mean, look what happened to New Phoenix. We even caught this one St. Gilly freak. Try to detonate a havoc nuke. Oh, yeah, give it a rest. We all know you were on the other side of town when they caught that hinge head. Yeah? And where were you, DeMarco? Well, Madsen and me? We were just making sure the ladies of Rio de Janeiro felt safe and secure that's right just fire team majestic doing a little community outreach man. that's right <laughs> this cutscene unsettles me for a few reasons one the way that majestic acts while more in keeping with the mannerisms of normal humans and in particular the mannerisms of career military don't come across as being worthy of the title of spartans somehow they in my humble opinion are not spartans nor will they ever be. There are only two Spartans of Majestic whom I believe are Spartan material, and that's Gabriel Thorne and Tedra Grant. The other reason it unsettles me is that Spartans represent cutting-edge human augmentation technologies, super soldiers, and over the entire course of the Spartan programs, likely trillions of dollars of military investment. These augmentations are military-grade augmentations, and judging by previous evidence of augmentations being passed on genetically to children of Spartans, the very idea that DeMarco and Madsen have been hopping into bed with various women in Rio de Janeiro troubles me greatly. Spartan 1.1s is the name given to the offspring of individuals from the Orion candidates. The Orions were the predecessor program to the Spartan program, and were informally called the Spartan Ones. Some of these Spartan ones evidently went on to have children who then expressed various performance superiorities to human baseline, including but not limited to higher than average intelligence, increased speed, enhanced vision, immunity to most illnesses, inability to become intoxicated through alcohol, though they can get high through an unspecified illegal recreational drug as well as by painkillers, decreased amount of time required for sleep, enhanced hearing, increased lung capacity, superior muscle density, heightened sense of balance, accelerated cellular regeneration, faster than normal reflexes and increased strength, etc. This indicates that some of the chemical and genetic augmentations given to the Spartan ones could be passed on to some degree to their children. With the Spartan fours, the UNSC has been presented with a rather unique problem that it didn't necessarily have with the earlier Spartan generations. With the Spartan ones, there was such a small number of them and so few of them actually survived that the children born as a consequence were highly isolated circumstances. With the Spartan twos, their augmentations suppressed their sexual drive. Now, while this doesn't mean that the Spartan twos were incapable of having sex or reproducing, it does mean that they had basically no interest in sex whatsoever. Although Maria062 did leave the UNSC and have children, she is also likely to be the only Spartan to leave the UNSC and have children. That makes it relatively easy for the UNSC to keep an eye on her and her children to monitor any such augmentations being passed on. Aside from this, the large majority of remaining Spartan twos remained in active duty and never settled with any discernible family. To be fair, Spartan twos and the very nature of their training after being kidnapped as children and their forging into Spartans makes them very physically imposing and difficult to associate with. Spartan twos would be head and shoulders taller than most other human beings, painfully pale, covered in battle scars and surgical scars. They'd be much larger in muscle mass and weight than other humans, and on a social level, they'd be very difficult to get to know, or even fully understand. Their personalities were moulded to be of benefit to the theatre of war, as opposed to normal human socialising and interaction. All of this would make it very difficult for normal humans and Spartans to develop romantic relationships, making Spartan 2.1's non-existence with the exception of Maria's children. On top of this, due to the investment that the UNSC will have made into the Spartans, it is likely that they wouldn't even allow them to retire to have a quote-unquote normal life. Even Randall037 had to have most of his augmentations removed in order to be allowed to retire to remain with the family he had on the colony he was stranded on. Spartan 3 augmentations didn't have such an effect on their sexual drive, 
but much of the aforementioned physiological and mental differences of the Spartan twos would also be a problem for the threes. There are potentially a few cases of what appear to be close, perhaps even romantic relationships developing between two Spartan threes, but again, the likelihood is that the instances of retiring from the military and starting families is non-existent for the Spartan threes. With the Spartan fours, however, they were consenting adults beforehand, made all of the normal social developments as humans, and then received augmentations which do not alter sex drive. This means that it is all the more likely for the Spartan fours to have casual sex and or more serious relationships that may or may not lead to children. Due to the significantly increased numbers of the Spartan fours and the increased likelihood of them having relationships with civilians or one another, makes it exponentially more likely that children will be born of the Spartan fours, leading to a much larger chance of these military-grade chemical and genetic augmentations actually being expressed within the wider human populace. While it is assumed that most of the augmentations that the Spartan fours receive cannot be passed on, particularly in the case of the surgical augmentations, the very fact that some of the augmentations of the Spartan ones could be passed on indicates there is at least a chance the genetic orgs of the S fours could also be passed on, but there are only a very isolated ways in which that could actually happen due to the complexities of genetic mutations. A genetic mutation is a permanent alteration in the DNA sequence that makes up a gene, such that the sequence differs from what is found in most people. Mutations range in size, they can affect anywhere from a single DNA building block or a base pair to large segments of the chromosome that include multiple genes. Gene mutations can be classified in two major ways. Hereditary mutations are inherited from a parent and are present throughout a person's life in virtually every cell in their body. These mutations are also called germline mutations because they are present in the parent's egg or sperm cells, which are also called germ cells. When an egg and a sperm cell unite, the resulting fertilized egg receives DNA from both parents. If this DNA has a mutation, the child that grows from the fertilized egg will have the mutation in each of his or her cells. Acquired or somatic mutations occur at some time during the person's life and are present only in certain cells, not in every cell in the body. These changes can be caused by environmental factors such as ultraviolet radiation from the sun, can occur if there is an error made as the DNA copies itself during the cell division, or in this case it can be acquired through well, military-grade augmentations, basically. Acquired mutations in somatic cells, which are cells other than sperm and egg cells, cannot be passed to the next generation unless the augmentation to the genetics also affects the egg and sperm cells, which is what is implied by the very fact that the Spartan 1.1 children even exist. Genetic changes that are described as de novo or new mutations can either be hereditary or somatic. In some cases, mutations occur in a person's egg or sperm, but is not present in any of the person's other cells. In other cases, these mutations occur in the fertilized egg shortly after the egg and sperm cells unite. It is often impossible to tell exactly when a de novo mutation happened. As the fertilized egg divides, each resulting cell in the growing embryo will have that mutation. De novo mutations may explain genetic disorders in which an affected child has a mutation in every cell of the body but the parent does not, and there is no family history of the disorder. Somatic mutations that happen in a single cell early in embryonic development can lead to a situation called mosaicism. These genetic changes are not present in the parent's egg or sperm cells, or in the fertilized egg, but happen a little bit later when the embryo includes several cells. As all the cells divide during growth and development, cells that arise from the cell with the altered gene will have the mutation, while other cells will not. Depending on the mutation and how many cells are affected, mosaicism may or may not cause the mutation to be expressed. Most disease-causing gene mutations are uncommon in the general population, however, other genetic changes occur more frequently. Genetic alterations that occur in more than 1% of the population are called polymorphisms. They are common enough to be considered a normal variation in DNA. Polymorphisms are responsible for many of the normal differences between people such as eye colour, hair colour and blood type. Although many polymorphisms have no negative effects on the person's health, some of these variations may influence the risk of developing certain disorders. 
It should be noted that although the genetic mutations given to the Spartans are technically defined as somatic mutations, because they happen during the person's life and thus shouldn't be able to be passed on, the very fact that Spartan 1.1s exists suggests that the somatic mutation also, either intentionally or inadvertently, affects the sex cells, thereby enabling some degree of these mutations to be passed on. The interesting part of this idea is that Spartans having children, even if they are only Spartan Fords, still represent what amounts to the breeding of military assets with an extremely high financial and strategic value. While the vast majority of the augmentations, and arguably the more powerful of the augmentations, are surgical in nature, meaning that they cannot be passed on, there remains a plethora of genetic alterations including changes to the cellular aging, replenishment of telomerase, their healing factor, and half a dozen others that affect other aspects of their physiology that necessitate that practically every cell in the body is given such a mutation. This isn't outside of the boundaries of possibility 500 years in the future, and are evidenced by the Spartan 1.1s exhibiting genetic augmentations making them superior to normal human benchmarks, so they are likely to have equally affected the sperm and egg cells of the Spartans, thereby making these likely to be passed on. The passing on of biological and genetic augmentations to children, particularly in the case of the Spartan 4s as discussed previously, represents a significant security breach. Spartans are military and strategic investments. Their bodies literally contain military-grade augmentations and hardware to the tune of several hundred thousand dollars worth of hardware and wetware, and likely significantly more. For some of these augmentations to be able to be passed on to children, whether the parentage of those children is intentional or not, this means that over time the UNSC could be greeted by a growing percentage of the human populace being naturally and innately augmented, and thus superior to basic human benchmark. There would only need to be a contingent of these superior human 2.0s being raised on colonies with insurrectionist sympathies, and suddenly the UNSC has the distinct possibility of being confronted by insurrectionist super soldiers, capable of obliterating the average human soldier and putting up a significant fight to the Spartans, especially if there is a numbers and home field advantage. In this regard, having Spartans with some degree of promiscuity could prove to be a massive liability. Now there are of course two eventualities that could render these points null and void. One being the only example of augmentations being passed on is with the Spartan 1.1s, when the orgs were more crude and not as comprehensively thought out and engineered, and that all augmentation sets since have been specifically engineered to not affect the egg and sperm cells of the recipient. Or, two, there is a clause as part of the Spartan program that necessitates that consenting adults entered into the Spartan program are sterilised to avoid such security breaches in the first place. These two possibilities both have their drawbacks and complications, but with Dr. Halsey's statement being, Your mistake is seeing Spartans as military hardware. My Spartans are humanity's next step. Our destiny as a species. Do not underestimate them. But most of all, do not underestimate him. I kinda hope that both of those possibilities are wrong, and that humanity will gradually begin being naturally augmented by inheriting Spartan orcs genetically from their parents, paving a new future for humanity, so we are all more capable as a species to face the inevitable threats ahead. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below. I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. So Tenchi, the silent cartographer, Brian, Sebastian, Holden, Defiant Alpha 117, Nathan and Red Sea, the holders of the mantle, Darian, Ty, Black Biscuit, J Rabbit, Austin, Kaiser and Silux, my reclaimers, Zach, Deep Cover, Verbal Statue, Spesico, Spartan, A498, Guppy, Josh, Mickey, Bastian, my Metarchs and all of the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome and this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo lore discussed to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. If you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time to put into this content and other Halo related goodness. Take it easy everyone, find peace in the domain.